Murder is for the girly. I'm a serious so, detective. Have you seen my hat? So Look at me in the eye and say that again. I'm a serious detective. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Pixel Circus Plays. Today, we are jumping into one of the Hunt a Killer games. We are doing Body on the Boardwalk. Both of you have been on the channel before. Yes. But yes, let's yes. just go down the line and tell people who we are and where, where, what you've been here before. What they might know you from. Oh, hi, I'm Elise Resendez. You may know me from this table that I built with my own two hands and my own husband. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Blickamore. That's it. Oh, oh no, uh, hi, I'm Dana <laughs> Gage, and uh, I, you know, do random creative things all over the place. Uh, you know, result of hyperfixations. Uh, you can follow me um, at Bitterthorn on the internet. Hi, I'm Sage Ryan. I work here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kaylee Bray. You know me from here. Great. So if you've never seen a Hunt a Killer game before, essentially this is a box of evidence. Uh, there is an envelope that we will get to at the end of it to see if we have correctly solved the murder. You're trying to get through motive. Uh, you're trying to get through the means to do so. Essentially, there's like a few check boxes that you go through at the end of it to be like, have we narrowed it down from the suspects that we were provided, the evidence, the information that we have ahead of us, and see if we can lock down who it is from just the pieces that are in this box. We have a lovely little camera in front of us that you can see in the shot that we'll be able to like hold things up to you and show you along. We can kind of start digging this evidence out. There is a specific thing that we start with, uh, okay. which is like our assignment letter, oh, wow. essentially, from Gray Investigations. Now, Elise and I have both done these before. Danny and Kaylee are new to this. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, from Gray Investigations. Hello, investigators. Thanks for taking this case. I know your client, Maria, will be grateful for your help. Maria has a lot of useful evidence to share with you, and she's already taken the initiative to interview potential witnesses about what they saw on the day of the crime. Since she knows the community so well, I asked her to put together profiles on people that she thinks are the most likely suspects using our Deviant Tracker software. Her notes on each of them should help you narrow the field and find the killer, if only all of my clients were as thorough as she is. Of course, she has a reason to be. Her son, Teo, has been arrested for the crime! I can't blame her for trying to look out for her son, but I should warn you right now. Your responsibility is to follow the facts, not to give her the answer she is looking for. Mm -hmm. Maria may be the client, but it is your duty to bring the killer to justice no matter who it is. If I were you, I'd start by working out a timeline of everyone's movements on the day of the murder. You may not be able to account for every moment of their day, but figuring out where they were uh, and what they were doing in the hours leading up and immediately following the crime will help you get a handle on the situation and better assess everyone's uh, alibis. Remember that you should be able to corroborate all of your suspects' claims, so don't write someone off until you can back up their alibi with other evidence. Keep in mind that you're going to have to do more than simply exclude innocent suspects. You will also need to work out who the real killer is and why they committed the crime. Pay attention to each suspect's means, motive, and opportunity. Those are like the three things that you generally lock down at the very end to make sure you have the correct person. The killer will be someone who meets all three criteria. They had the chance to commit the murder, had a reason to do it, and can be linked to the scene of the crime. If you can't prove a suspect wasn't at the scene, they're in the clear. You'll also want to brush up on your code-breaking skills for this. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, my middle school self is so <laughs> stoked. <laughs> My now self is gonna be so stoked for that. I make stupid this puzzles for my players all the time. Yes, yes. Oh my god. There is puzzles. no better way to conceal secret information than with a cipher, and it seems like everyone at Stella Park has something to hide. Ooh. Pay attention to the context clues to help you work out the true meaning of coded messages you find. And don't forget, sometimes looking at a problem from a different angle can give you a fresh perspective. That's very tongue in cheek. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I know you can work out really what really happened if you are willing to follow where the evidence leads you. Good luck, Michelle Gray. Ooh. Okay. Done and done. Okay. Let's go. We're going to just spread out all this stuff here. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so that you all can see. <laughs> okay. I don't know who that is, but this is incredible. We're going to have to look at Welp reviews. Oh! Welp. What? Welp. Welp! 10 out of 10, Hunter Keller. Welp. So, uh, Michelle's recommendation was to work out a timeline first. Right? Great. Okay. How we do that up is going to be kind of up to us to figure out. So, if everybody wants to, like, grab a piece of evidence that they want to read. I think we need... <gasps> oh yes! I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna include the timeline. All right, let's go. So okay, let's go, everybody. So ready. You brought a crime notebook. What's this the date we got? It's very difficult to read like this. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> probably not. not the way. Okay, so Miss Gray, 
I'm turning to you because I'm out of options. My son, Teo, has been arrested for the murder of his girlfriend, Katie Dunn. Her body was discovered inside the ride our family owns on the boardwalk here in Brittany Beach. Screamorama is one of those old school haunted house rides. Teo is the one who found her. He always um. does a walkthrough before he opens the ride for the day just to make sure things are running smoothly. He said he might not have noticed her at all if it hadn't been for the junk on the floor. There was an old keychain, which we have, uh, lying there, next to a souvenir tin with a lock on it, Ooh. and a bloody popcorn bag full of pieces of paper. Oh! Oh! That's one of the clown's face! And oh. it's got stuff in it! Woo! Okay, so these uh, are our first piece of evidence. Okay. So look through then after this. Yeah. Uh, at first, he thought it was trash. Just trash, but then he saw Katie slumped behind some tombstones in the section of the ride we call Ghosts in the Graveyard. He said he tried to help her, but it was already too late. Teo asked me to hide the stuff he found near Katie's body, along with a napkin with some nonsense scribbled on it, which Elise also found. Okay. Um, <gasps> he was terrified the cops would use it against him. I don't know what he thought the police would learn from a random assortment of junk, but I did what Teo asked. I'm not still. I'm still not sure I was right, but what mother wouldn't try to protect her son? Yeah. After Teo was arrested, I tried to show everything to his lawyer, but he said he didn't want to hear about me withholding evidence from the police. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I even tried to open the tin myself, but I couldn't work out the combination to the lock. Uh -huh. and then I started to think maybe I didn't want to know what was inside. I know it doesn't look good. Nothing about the situation looks good. Teo was right to be afraid the cops would blame him for Katie's death. They took their time getting around to him, but they never saw Teo as anything other than a troubled kid up to no good on the boardwalk. And look, I'll be the first to admit that nobody who works here is exactly what you'd call an upstanding citizen. Oh. We've all looked the other way over a case Everyone's of midway. Everyone's done a crime. Everyone's done a crime. That's, that's what we're saying. But we've all looked the other way over a case of midway prizes that fell off a truck. But that doesn't mean we're bad people, not in the ways that really count. It's not stealing if it's from a corporation in Minecraft. <laughs> when I started, when I first started working here, Stella Park was a pretty nice place. But these days, most of us are struggling just to stay afloat. Mm. We look out for each other because we're the only ones we can trust. The tourists think we exist only to take their tickets and clean up their trash, and Stella Park's management exploits us every chance they get. As for the authorities, they're all perfectly happy to write us off as lowlifes and thieves. Thing is, I can see why the police suspect Teo. Oh. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Isn't that a terrible thing for a mother to That's admit? So sad. It doesn't mean I agree with them, but I can't deny that Teo's got a record. He's done plenty of things that aren't strictly legal. He's hurt people before. Mm. And he's not making it easy to believe he's innocent. Ooh, he's hurt people before. He's hurt people before. That's not looking good, Teo. Do you think this is Teo? Kind of. I think it's, it's got to be those back. two, right? What did, what did, he's done plenty of things that aren't strictly... Uh, he refuses to tell anyone where he was the night Katie died. Oh, no. <gasps> Even his mother? Even his wait, mother. Wait, wait, wait. We say that again? What was it? He's re he refuses to tell anyone where he was oh. the night Katie died. Oh, oh. Oh, so he won't give his alibi. He doesn't He doesn't have one. He's giving guilty. <laughs> it is. I know he's hiding something. I just wish he'd tell me what's really going on. Whatever he was doing, it could be the key to clearing him of Katie's oh, murder. So no alibi. Yeah. I or don't no want to believe. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to believe he could be capable of killing someone he loved. To me, Teo will always be the shy kid who won first place in his school's art show but refused to go up and accept his award because he was afraid people would make fun of him. Oh. Somewhere along the way, that sweet little boy grew up to be full of so much anger that it poisoned him. I don't know where I let him down, only that I can't do it again. There has to be something that will help his case. With his court date coming up, I'll take whatever hope I can get. I've been asking around on the boardwalk, trying to see if anybody remembers something about that day, but there's only so much uh, I can do on my own. That's where you come in. <gasps> Just in case, for future evidence. Absolutely. We need a backup. <laughs> How are you the coolest the person on the planet always? Yeah. Such a I need someone who can look at all this evidence and put it together in a way that makes sense. Maybe then you'll be able to work out what really happened. I have to know I'm doing everything I possibly can to help my son. I'm trusting you to do the same. Maria Palace. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. But yeah. no date. No, we do not yet have a date of the murder. I guess we should learn about the crime itself. Should I we read so. this? I think that's a great way yeah. to start. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have a preference on who would like to read it? <laughs> no, I can read it. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> well, I'll try. Okay. Uh, don't have to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I got nervous. Uh, police. 
Stella Park worker arrested for gruesome amusement park slaying. And then it says by Salma Muhammad. Okay. Uh, there's a picture of a young femme. It says Catherine Dunn was found murdered inside the Screamarama Dark Ride at Stella Park, photo courtesy of Vincent Stella Jr. Um, okay, the actual article. Brittany Beach. Police have arrested a local man, Theodore Pallas, in connection with the murder of a fellow amusement park worker. According to the Brittany Beach Police Department, Pallas was apprehended at his mother's home on Thursday for the slaying of Stella Park employee Catherine Dunn. Pallas's arrest ends the BBPD's lengthy investigation into the murder. On November 22nd, Dunn's body was discovered inside Screamorama, the park's horror-themed dark ride. She'd been stabbed multiple times. According to the mm. BBPD documents, Pal Pallas called police to the scene shortly after 11 a.m., claiming to have found Dunn's remains during a routine safety check. Pallas told officers the back door to the attraction had been open when he arrived for work that morning. Should see, like, what time he usually gets in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Essex County Medical Examiner's Office later determined that Dunn had died around 6 p.m. the previous day. Hey, there you go. Uh, while the BBPD initially pursued other leads, the investigation led back to Pallas, who was in a romantic relationship with Dunn. The couple was seen arguing outside Screamorama on the day of the murder, according to police. Pallas was previously convicted of juvenile assault with a deadly weapon in 2017. The charge stemmed from an altercation with Rocco Pereira, another Stella Park worker, in which Pallas attacked Pereira with a knife. Oh. oh. Same weapon. According to the Essex County District Attorney's Office, Pallas served the entirety of his eight-month sentence at Rogers House, a young adult rehabilitative services detention center. Similarities between Pereira's case and Dunn's murder tipped off police to Pallas' possible involvement, stated BBPD Sergeant Thomas Schuyler. Uh, Tio Pallas has a history of violence and was close to the victim, Schuyler said outside police headquarters on Thursday. While the evidence originally suggested a break-in by a party unaffiliated with Stella Park, we are now confident that Miss Dunn was lured to Screamorama and murdered by a person she knew well, and we believe that person is Mr. Pallas. Oh. After multiple rounds of questioning, Pallas was arrested by BBPD and is currently being held without bail. The Brittany Beach Police Department is proud to take the first step in bringing closure to the Dunn family, Skyler stated, stated. We trust that justice will be served. Dunn is remembered as a thoughtful and optimistic person who loved spending time on the boardwalk with her co-workers and friends. In addition to working the register at one of Stella Park's souvenir shops, she was a computer science major at Atlantic Coast State University and regular volunteer with Brittany Beach Harvesters, a local food bank. The community of Stella Park mourns the passing of one of our most beloved members, said her uncle, Vincent Stella Jr., who was the person who took her photo. Uh, oh, that was that's being uncle? used for the article. Yeah. Blah. So that's Sorry, her well, uncle. Um, yes, yeah, so that's her uncle that said that. The community of Stella Park mourns the passing of one of our most beloved members, said her uncle. Katie was an angel. She will be greatly missed. Okay. And that's all. Also, way to be there. a champ with BBPD. Oh, my God, there's so much. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tongue twister. Yeah. Wait, there's Let's more. See what's on um, this is oh, an, an unrelated thing. This is an opinion piece called Trouble in Paradise. Um, oh, it is? No, it's I actually. I feel like. What? It is actually continued about oh, the murder. Oh, does it really? Mm. Oh, it's like an opinion piece on the murder. And possibly yeah. by Alan Prentice the <laughs> third. Oh. Alan. <laughs> guilty of something. I don't know if it's murder, right? but yeah. the yeah. third? Come on now. <laughs> the shocking murder of an employee may spell the end for a local amusement park that calls itself Paradise by the Sea. But while the details of the vicious crime alone are shocking, this, uh, the event is also the latest chapter in a decades-long decline. Popular throughout much of the 20th century, Stella Park, a beachside car carnival-style amusement park, was founded in the 1920s by local entrepreneur Rosario Stella. Okay, now if Does it sound familiar? Vincent Stella is her uncle, oh. correct? She is in what relation to the park of, like founders? Yeah. Did they say that already? They say that she was. I don't no. recall that. It's weird that they wouldn't say that it was like her family's amusement yeah. park, right? It is weird. Because like, that's her uncle, maybe somebody else took it over. But her well, because her last name is Dunn. Correct. Yeah. So, which like it's her uncle, so it makes sense. So it's, it's probably, probably like her mom's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so its current struggles can be traced back to the 80s, a crime rate surrounding the neighborhood rose exponentially. At the same time, Stella Park began facing the threat of competition from corpo... um, Rate backed, uh, corporate backed, there we go, separated by a line, corporate backed theme parks that were expanding across the country. So there also could be something there of like competition, other, you know, people. Yeah. Maybe she had the, he was going to come into her hands soon. Um, they've only grown worse over time. The park's financial situation was bad during the past decade, changes in management, specifically the shift of power from the park's beloved second owner, Vincent Stella Sr., to his reportedly less benevolent son, Vincent Stella Jr., Mm -hmm. have also contributed to the park's decline, according to several of the park's workers. The park's reputation may be tarnished, but Stella Park's uh, owner-operators are fighting to maintain their livelihood. Some of the attractions have been open since the 20s, changing hands from one family member to another over several generations. For many at Stella Park, the amusement park business is the only business they know. Unsurprisingly, many in the park's eccentric cast of characters seem like holdovers from a different area, uh, from a different era. These workers, several of whom came to Stella Park after years on the road, I'm guessing the like carnival-esque mm-hmm. portion mm-hmm. of it, belong to a fading carnival culture that is becoming rarer by the year. Even today, parkgoers might catch the odd uh, phrase in Cezarn, uh, an old-fashioned carnival cant that uses nonsense syllables inserted into word. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, <laughs> thieves can uh, sorry, I just threw a pencil. So uh, inserted into words as a way to disguise the meaning. The secret language was originally created to keep communication secret from customers and is one of the many charming, if outdated, customs of this colorful institution. Hoping to preserve their way of life by keeping Stella Park in business, the park's tight knit community soldiers on despite rising crime rates and falling ticket sales. However, as the park's famous Madame Oracle fortune telling machine might say, the, for- the future remains unclear. As the world waits for this paradise by the sea to sink, these old timers are desperately counting on Stella park to stay afloat what's so, the name of the old shanty type song uh so the Ciazarn, c-i-a-z-a-r-n i'm guessing Ciazarn is the the yeah, and it's an old-fashioned carnival cant that uses nonsense syllables inserted into words yeah okay very interesting and then there's an advertisement for a criminal defense lawyer lol <laughs> um do you think it's do you oh, think that's, that's the same. That's the same. Lawyer. Probably, yeah. yeah. Omg, a paper letter. Oh, it is. Oscar yeah. and Grace LLC. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, important. Yeah, November twenty first, five oh nine p.m. to six twenty five p.m., which is technically exactly the window that, that the murder was committed. Murder so maybe was that's next. next. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, the law offices of Oscar and Grace LLC. <sighs> Question mark. <laughs> November 21st, 5 9 p.m. to 6 25 p.m. So these are basically like the meeting minutes. Uh, uh-huh. Meeting to discuss legal action. This meeting is between representatives of the law offices of Oscar and Grace LLC, here for Apture named ONG, mm-hmm. uh, and some of Stella Park's independent owner operators that was called in order by Seth Carlson on November 21st at 5 9 p.m. This might give some people an alibi. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Uh, this meeting is to happen at the law offices of Oscar and Grace LLC to discuss options of civil litigation against Vincent Stella Jr., the owner of Stella Park and all associated properties. Ooh. Okay, all here's the spicy part. Present, John Gino Benny, Seth Carlson. This is all, if you feel like taking notes, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Nate, okay, so hang on. John Gino Benny, owner of the Fairy Go Round. Seth Carlson, representative of ONG. Um, which is this law office. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Glover, owner of High Tide. Nathan Howe, owner of Block the Dot. John Hurst, okay. owner of Buffecta Co. Yeah. Misty Shore. <laughs> what was after Nathan? It was what is Nathan it? Howe, John Hurst. Oh, there's two Johns. Buffecta Co. Mm. Okay. Like Gino home. Benny is the fairy go round owner. Okay. You just call him Gino, his name's in quotes, which means okay. that's the one he prefers. Okay. <laughs> So after John Hurst is Misty Klein, co-owner of Swag by the Shore. Swag? Swag. I'm, I'm struggling. Is that, that probably the, the it's okay. what is it? That might Drink be the gift, gift shop. Gift mm-hmm. shop? Yeah. Ray oh, Laundry, no. owner of Funnel of Love, which I God, I hope that's God, <laughs> I hope that's case. food. <laughs> Peter Orr, owner of Snake That. Maria Palace, owner of Screamerama. Uh Erica Vanzuela, owner of the Brittany Taffy, and Jarrell Walton, representative of ONG. 
Okay, that's a lot. That's of a lot of people. Names. This is also like first page right here, yeah, so, so we can we also reference, reference it. it mm -hmm. uh, absent, Isabella Sweet, owner of Rainbow Worlds, unexcused. Okay. J. C. Vickers, owner of the Pandemonium, excused. Mark White, owner of Mr. Nelson Glaucade, unexcused. The minutes of the last month's meeting were approved unanimously. Okay, and then as reported by Maria, grievances. On November 4th, Benny requested renovations to work on his sign. Benny is... Gino? Yeah. I guess. No God, referencing people with their first name and not their, their last name, not their first name or oh, their no. nickname. Benny requested renovation work on his sign, which has not been acknowledged, even though he began paying for work to be done. Ooh. On November 8th, Stella, which is... Junior? The guy, Stella is the, the guy oh, who... Oh, yeah. Stella sent one of his goons to assault two workers Ooh. at Buffecto because rent was late by a few days. One is currently recovering in the hospital. Oh, oh God. God. Neither employee is willing to go on record about the incident. Whoa. After closing on November 11th, Laundry and Stella got into a heated argument after Laundry made a remark about how Stella runs the park. Laundry is Ray Laundry, owner of Funnel of Love. Last week, White... Mark White, who was has an unexcused absence at this meeting, yep. owner of Mr. Nelson Glaucade, uh, White spoke to Stella about the increase in his insurance payments over the last three months, but reportedly Stella only said the arcade could easily be replaced if White felt fees were too much. On November 19th, Palace Venez v uh, Valenzuela and Howe met with Stella. See, that's a better law name. That's a law office yeah, practice. Yeah, <laughs> Palace Venezuela and Howe, not law offices of Oscar and Grace LLC. <laughs> <laughs> Palace Venezuela and Howe <laughs> met with Stella to see if there was a compromise they all could make. Stella refused further negotiations, told Palace that if she were to continue interfering, there might be a mishap at the Screamorama. Sounds like a threat to me. Business. 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 The operators moved to discuss possible actions that could be taken against Stella. Given the threats to Palace and White, the operators expressed concern that their own lives and livelihoods might be in danger should Stella become aware of their plans to take action against him. Carlson acknowledged that while the operators currently lack concrete evidence for charging Stella with a theft or assault, Stella could be charged for racketeering in the ma if the matter were taken to a higher authority. The question of who would be willing to give a testimony sparked an argument between Glover and Klein. Palace broke uh, up the argument and asked Clarkson what could be done about racketeering charges and how much would cost it would cost to pursue. Carlson indicated that ONG would have to discuss next steps in order to open an investigation with the Delaware Department of Investigations. Carlson recommended that in the meantime, the operators save what evidence they may already have and do their best to keep Stella at bay. The operators approved this course of action. This meeting then concluded with operators agreeing to allow ONG to assess opening full investigations against Stella. Additional comments, none adjournment. The meeting was adjourned at 6.25 p.m. by Seth Car uh, Carlson. Participants agreed to meet again the same time and location December 12th, one month later. Minutes were submitted by, approved by the law offices of mm -hmm. Grace and, uh, Oscar and Grace LLC. So if this was November 21st, the biggest clue is that anyone who was present could possibly not have committed the murder. Right. Because right. Yes. the 6 o'clock was the expected time of death. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, can I have that list of suspects? You may. Think, For personal please? records only. Yeah. So we this now is, have believe, faces and names. Yeah, because this is a deviant tracker. So this is the list that they referenced oh, in that is, first letter uh, that Maria put together. Not deviant art. Not. <laughs> not deviant Well, hold on. Art. Let me check. Is there any art? <gasps> There's one of them. So these are all of the people that Maria considers to be suspects. Mm. So we have Dwayne James Dolly. Was he on that list? He was not. No, we're on there. Familiar. So uh, he is the owner and operator of Dolly's, which is its own place. Runs the Boardwalk Frozen Custard Shop. Okay, we're going to give like just an overview yep. on him for now. We'll get more into the people's details when we come back to them. He has previously been arrested for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest in 1993. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. It's been a while. Oh, wow. Uh, Theodore Tio, Eugene Palace. Um... Sentenced to eight months for that juvenile assault. Um, there's some information about, like, his dad leaving. Mm. Uh, the notes are from his mom, which puts these in a strange perspective. So it's like his dad left Tia when, when Tia was 10. It's been just the two of us ever since. Yeah. I did the best I could. Got caught up in some of Vince's more shady dealings. Mm. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, He's been going mm-hmm. to counseling. Okay, so what he went to juvenile for or to juvie for was probably something with Vincent Stella Jr. Yeah. It seems mm-hmm. like he was doing because in the article, did it say he got, uh, in the article, stabbing. he went to, it was a stabbing, right? Yeah. Yes. But I'm guessing he did that for oh, Vincent Stella Jr. Right, 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 right. He was probably yeah. working yep, for yep, him because yep, yep. Vincent yep. Stella Jr. runs this like a mob. It yeah. is very much a mob carnival. Yeah. And this is I mean, not a picture. picture. Uh, no, that's not No, that's not, 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 that's not to you. But also, this, the girl in the, in like this main uh, couple uh-huh. is also not, not, uh, not Katie. But this that is, I think that is. <gasps> I think that's oh. so. This so the it's a the little sh- the last photo of Katie is going to be hard for me to. Yeah. So these two kids, we not not we thought it was going to be Teo and, and Katie. Instead, and it's not. let me show you. Teo, right here. Now you've seen it. Okay, so I'm sorry, we're going to move on to who else is there. Um, the next person is Rocco Matthew Pereira. Um, so calls himself Vince's go-to guy. Ugh. Definitely gave us a photo that looks like a, a buff, tough guy. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Gave us tattoos, gave us the flex, showed scars. Um, looks like trouble. Yeah. He's just kind of a, a bruiser. Uh, but he is, well, he does have an associate of uh, science and finance. Fascinating. Hey, uh, multiple misdemeanors of public intoxication and disorderly conduct. I think he is like on the books as Vincent's like bookkeeper, sure. <laughs> but he definitely is also a, a bruiser of a dude. He's an accountant. <laughs> okay, the next person we have here is Bethany Sophia Ramirez. Uh, Bethany uh, dated Teo for three years. They were fighting most of the time. It seemed like standard teenage drama to me. I remember one of their more heated arguments. We found out Teo's tire slash. She could be a lot. I think sometimes she and Teo brought out the worst in each other. She is a redemption counter assistant at Mr. Neon's Glowcade and store clerk at the J-Mart. Two jobs. Um, that's her. The ex-girlfriend. The Interesting. There's always got to be an ex-girlfriend. Oh, so uh, likes blades. Stabbing things. Spicy. Likes blades? Because she slashed the tires. Oh, she did slash tires. You're right. Okay. Ooh, Vincent Rosario Stella Jr. himself. Ooh. Let's take a look at the picture. And tell me if this is what you thought he'd look like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. A thousand right? That's percent. the jawline of pretty a douchebag. Yeah. So he is the current owner of Stella Park. Uh, he is more like a slumlord than an owner. His Ooh. family bought the island back in 1920s, and he rules the place with an iron fist. Owns a boat and three houses, all bought with the profits off of his tenants' hard work. Eat the landlords. Um, basically, they're like, he's taking us for all he's got. Um, there's lots of stuff in here, but there's something very interesting at the bottom of this. According to the cops, Vince didn't report Katie missing when she didn't come home the night of the murder. How Wait, did she live? Come home to where? Okay, hold on. Well, he's Katie's uncle. Yeah. So yeah. he's also Katie's uncle. We're gonna read this whole one. Um, Senior, not junior. This is junior. 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 Junior's the uncle. Junior's the uncle. Yes. Oh. Uh, he's also Katie's uncle. He is the one who arranged for her to work on the boardwalk in the first place. Since her parents live out of state, she stayed with him. I don't think that she was thrilled about that arrangement, but it was convenient, and it's not like Vince doesn't have the space. Vince once told me he didn't think that Teo was good enough for Katie. I'm sure he didn't mind watching my boy go down for her murder. The guy has two friends in the whole world, Rocco and Dwayne. Uh, the first he pays, the second he grew up with. I doubt there are many people in this town he can trust or who'd be willing to trust him. No priors somehow between collecting money, threatening people he doesn't like, and physically assaulting workers when things don't go his way. Vince ought to be behind bars. I guess he's just gotten pretty good at finding impressionable kids to get their hands dirty for him instead. According to the cops, Vince didn't report Katie missing when she didn't come home on the night of the murder. Um, says that he stopped by the Funnel of Love, the Funnel Cake Shop, and Katie's uh, around Katie's time of death... Anyone who knows Vince knows not to believe a word that comes out of his mouth. So currently his alibi is not cooperated. He just says that he had been yeah. to the Funnel of Love and the Funnel Cake Shop. Also, Ray Laundry was at the meeting was of say. ONG. So okay. he stopped by the Funnel of Love, but not to talk to Ray Laundry because Ray Laundry was currently having a meeting. Yeah. Very interesting. So those were all of our suspects. Okay? I also the whole did didn't show yes. was Dwayne, which is the, like, fro yoga. I would like to continue uh, to... 
enjoy the people who designed this game because part of one of the things that you get to do is you get to get a piece of evidence and you get to open it up and see things like, oh, I don't know what this is. What is it? It's not about what's on the front. It's about <gasps> what's on the back. <laughs> He's mine and you know it. Meet me at the wheel in two the hours. The Ferris wheel. Ooh, like okay. the one in the background of the picture. Oh my gosh. It is the Ferris so, wheel. So <laughs> that's not his ex though. That's not her. No. But that was her probably... Waiting to meet up with her. Waiting to meet someone at the Ferris wheel. Unless, wait, no. That might not be Katie. That might be Bethany. That might be her, yeah. The other thing that was in here, so like, but all this came in a bloody popcorn bag, right? Yeah, Keeping these things together, right? So the other thing that's in there is the Ask Madam Oracle, which on the back says, K looks like she was right. K, comma, looks like she was right. Heart dash T. Okay. And then some lucky numbers, which we'll save for later. Also, a swag by the shore receipt, which is dated November 21st at 3.53 p.m. And then the other thing was the Screamerama literally has the logo on it. Wait, that's the logo of the sweatshirt. On her sweatshirt. I think that's the same shape. That might be. That, I think you're right. That might be. That Katie. sure is. That's no. the skull at the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the little yeah. white skull on the top. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes, that is. <laughs> good. Oh, wow. Good catch. And at the I top of this, it's... it says confirm amounts, verify so, pickups. Bethany. Yeah. So Bethany she pulled this. worked at the yeah. Glowcade. Great. We Great. think that this is Bethany at in the Ferris this wheel. photo at the Ferris wheel. But we don't know who's in the With picture. whoever this couple is. I mean, they may never be relevant, but who yeah. knows? Hmm. Um, but now I do think that's her because everything. I can see a little bit of a middle part and Katie had a side part. So it says, I know what you did. And it says, Vince knows oh, what Vince you did. Oh, Vince knows what you did. That makes sense. Scrambled, Vince knows right? what you did. Yeah. yeah. Vince knows what you did. <laughs> it's Keep not a your, cipher. What mouth is that? Open. Keep your mouth yeah. shut Ooh. and come with me to 47. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we need to figure out what 47 is. Is it the is it the Ferris wheel? Is it the like is oh, there like, like a, a map number type thing? There yeah, is a map. Yay! You so smart. Here. That's amazing. Nice. Family fun for Please, everyone. Yeah. There is not a 47. A 47. Yeah, I love oh, that shit. Oh, I love oh. that shit. Oh, it's I like the it. hidden. Okay. It goes yeah. it goes all the way up to 29. The other two pieces of the other two things that we have not yet touched is mm-hmm. the one star whelp review that was left on November 21st at 1158. And an email on November 21st at 6.19 p.m. Oh, 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 yeah. So this is to Ray Laundry from somebody. It's like a security yeah. alarm. Yeah. Like these Polylock are. security front door opened. Hello, Ray Laundry. Polylock detected the front door opened after designated operating oh. hours at 6.19 p.m. on Saturday, November 21st at oh. Funnel of Love. If this was you or somebody you know, please click here to subscribe. If you believe this message was sent in error, please contact the office during regular business hours. If you do not recognize this activity, please call the appropriate authorities as soon as possible. Remember, upgrading to Polylock Premium will ensure an automatic alert is sent to the authorities in your area with every forced entry report. To learn more about Polylock stores, blah, blah, blah. Remember, Polylock will never ask for your billing information over an email. Thank you, Polylock, your safety advisor. So... Depending on if he's technologically savvy, doors locked November 21st at 4.48 p.m. A polylock alert at 6.01 p.m. The front door forced entry and then at 6.19. So that's a window of 6.01 to 6.19. So he, Vincent said he was there yeah. at the time of the murder. And <gasps> and uh, the laundry guy was in this meeting. Correct. So it makes sense that if he wasn't there that Vincent broke into it. Yeah. That actually might he's solidify like Vincent's alibi. Telling the truth right. that he was Yeah. There. Right. Because he's too obvious anyways, right? Right. Uh, the, this is a November 21st, 1158 p.m. Or 1158 p.m. One-star review from Nikki H., uh, who has lived 287 reviews. That's oh, a lot wow. for a Welp user. Uh, for the worst. Welp user. If I could give negative starves, I would. Girl, wouldn't we all? (laughs) Our experience today was a nightmare. Where do I even start? Long story short, we waited in line for 45 minutes to visit the dinky little attractions and never got to set foot inside it. First, we were told there was mechanical problems. No big deal. My daughter and I waited patiently as we were season pass holders at several theme parks, and we understand that things do go wrong. 
Also, let me just say, I'm very, very easygoing person. Mm-hmm. Okay, 257 Nikki. reviews. Oh, okay, Nikki. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> However, when the expert addressing these mechanical problems is Screamarama's gangly-looking ride operator, who, by the way, is armed with only a wrench and a roll of duct tape that doesn't exactly inspire confidence, I couldn't help but wonder, will my friends be hearing about my tragic theme park accident on the 6 o'clock news? After what felt like an eternity, this kid assured us that the Screamarama is good to go. Then, while we were still waiting, wondering if the ride is even safe to go on, a scary looking guy sporting some pretty hideous tattoos, one of Stella Park's many fine, upstanding citizens, I'm sure, walks up, grabs Mr. Duct Tape by the collar. So, this this is Ray grabbing Tao. Yep. Uh, and shoves a dirty napkin. Rocco. Nap- Rocco, sorry, excuse me. Uh, uh, shoves a dirty napkin in his hand. Then the kid just shuts everything down and literally leaves the ride with his low life. Oh, and P.S. This is all happening 15 minutes before closing with 30 angry customers waiting in line. Perfect timing. What time does Stella Park close? Let's figure it out. Right now. Here's the napkin. That's yeah. the napkin. So we know that this napkin that says, uh, Vince knows what you did. Yep. Keep your mouth shut and come with me to 47 was, was from Rocco to Teo. And, right? and uh, when was this? Found on this Spock. was written at 11... 58 p.m. on November 21st, but it says uh, 15 minutes before closing with 30 in November. Yeah. So attractions uh, and concessions close at 6 p.m. in November. So this is 5.45 p.m. Yep. And it says that Teo left with Rocco? Um, Grabs Mr. Duct Tape by the collar, shoves a dirty napkin in his hand, then the kid just shuts everything down and literally leaves the ride with with this low life. ONPS, it all happened 15 minutes before closing. Okay. Hours later, my daughter is still crying because all she wanted to do was ride Screamorama, and I am not exaggerating one bit when I say this incident was truly traumatic for her. She is very sensitive. (laughs) I'm sure her name is Penelope, and she's a very special girl. Um, I emailed the park owner, Vincent Sella, directly and received a reply just moments ago. Uh, Not only did he refuse to refund the money, he told me in some very colorful language that to get a expletive life. Congratulations, Vince. You've destroyed a little girl's day at the beach. Shame on you. And I hope you choke on some of that unbelievably dry Stella Park funnel cake. I regret only four, maybe five things in my entire life. Uh. And this is one of them. Save your money, people. Day of the murder, 15 minutes before closing, Rocco says to me to take him. It's not meet me there. It's come with me. So they Mm. went together to 47. They were leaving Screamorama, which is where the body was found. They were going away from it. 15 minutes before she was found. I'm not going to say you couldn't get back there, but... Ray Laundry, owner of Funnel of Love and all-around stand-up guy, said Katie came by right before he left for the meeting, asking about his payments to Vince. Later that night, someone broke into the shop and cut open every single bag of flour. What a mess. That's not shit. Uh, he found a pair of scissors stuck in the powdered sugar. Someone really had it in for him. He gave me the security alert that he got that night, just in case I heard anything while I was asking around. So this is clearly from Maria, I think. Yeah. Um, I was like, no. Stanley Huang, the angriest man to ever sell a corn dog. <laughs> <laughs> what a description Put that of that down, I <gasps> Put that on my tombstone. It's so good. <laughs> Remembered a blonde girl loitering on the boardwalk just before closing time that Saturday said the only reason that it stuck with him was because she kept looking over towards the side of the boardwalk like she had a problem with him. Thought that she was holding some kind of box or tin. All right, Rolanda Walker works at Shake That. Told me that Katie dropped by sometime around 3.30 asking questions about the insurance payments. 3.30, we got time. Katie is enforcing for Vincent. Oh. This is the second note that says that she asked about payments. Yeah. And then she asked about the payment at Funnel of Love, and then that night he gets torn up. You know, all she could tell Katie was that they had been normal monthly pickups, just like usual. Later, as Rolanda was walking down the boardwalk after work, she saw someone who wasn't Ray leaving Funnel of Love. J.C. Vickers runs Pandemonium, uh, or Panda something else. Panda. I think it's Pandemonium. Yeah, I think you got it. it. Yeah. His handwriting is wild. It yeah. is wild. Uh, said that she heard someone screaming while she was cleaning up for the night, but figured it was just someone on another ride. Ever since she found out what happened to Katie, she's been wondering if maybe she was wrong about that. Oh, so that was it closing up, you know, 6 p.m., and that was at Pandemonium. So you okay. have one to, you want to read? Sure. So uh, Andy Thurman, the something? vendor at Papa Joe's Popcorn, which is where we got the bloody popcorn bag. We did. He didn't know Katie too well, but said he nearly knocked everything out of her hands when they ran into each other that day. She seemed worried and distant, and he felt bad for her and gave her an empty popcorn bag to carry everything and a child-sized lemonade to fix her up. So these were hers. 
Those were hers. Uh, Erica Singh, a local photographer who often works on the boardwalk, she was hired to take engagement photos at the Wheel of Wonder that Saturday afternoon. She went on and on about how it was the worst gig ever. The couple arrived late, people kept walking into the shots, and someone tried to swipe Erica's gears. That's this photo. That's this photo. It's after, not a great engagement photo. After but. all that, they finally got some semi-usable photos right as the shoot ended shortly after six. Addison Vega and Trino Walker. She looked like she spelled that yeah, yeah the weird. handwriting is uh, Bethany's best frenemies. Bethany had a drink with them the night of the murder. She showed up to the beach a few minutes before five. <laughs> wearing Teo's old screamer on a hoodie. Hey! You're so good. <laughs> uh, kept talking trash about Katie, accusing her of stealing Teo and saying the beach. she r deserved what was coming to her. Uh, after about 40 minutes, Bethany left looking like she was ready to cut someone. Nobody asked where she was going. Nice girls, right? <laughs> so that's 5.40. Yeah. So uh, 5 o'clock to 5.40, I think, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it says, Morky Merce and Orlarf? Jesus. Two low rent character performers. Okay, so they're supposed to. Oh, okay. it's Mickey Mouse and Olaf. Oh, you're right. Okay. Uh, two TM. low rent character performers. I'm no expert, but I don't think the standard costume for a certain mouse includes flip flops. Uh, Morky told me he saw someone about Theo's height stagger into the parking lot around 6:20, looking pretty roughed up. But this time, Olaf assured me we weren't responsible. <laughs> Okay, so that sounds like Teo got pulled away by Rocco yeah, and got and his then ass kicked. Oh, so until parking funny. lot at six twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what so color are we doing Teo? Uh, let's give him pink. Okay, six twenty parking lot somewhere. So I'm just gonna put it kind of yeah. up here for a second. And then we should also do a four to seven for Teo, uh, forty seven. Yeah. yeah. Tab. Ruby Diamond, a retired burlesque dancer who performs her special number every Saturday outside Sunshine Parlor. She saw Vince by the info booth, but sometime right before the park closing, he was pacing around the area and carrying a pair of scissors. Well, so I mean, the we scissors know what he found. found. He, was, yeah. he stabbed the flower. Where and that was getting ruined. Marge Nussman runs the ticket booth, said Katie stopped by a little after two, seeming anxious. Marge led her into the back office. Katie stayed maybe 20 minutes or so, came out holding some papers and looking even more upset. Uh, local kids who charge tourists to take photos with their boa constrictors, Blue Lizzie and Big Wanda. <laughs> $10 a pop for the college fund. Yeah, right. <laughs> Both saw Katie leaving Screamorama around 2. Okay. Huh. So that was probably when she went to enforce at Screamorama if right. she was walking around on this like path. So at 2, she left Screamorama. It's she, true, yeah. anyone could be lying, but it also could be, you know, I guess... If that's a five minute distance, because I'm like, that's five, actually 10, 15. That's about a 20 minute walk, which doesn't look like it should be, but I mean, it's a yeah. 15, 20 minute walk between the two. Mm -hmm. And where they're claiming that she was there at two is reasonable. It Maybe. It's not a direct it's not as, yeah. It's still weird. It's spicy. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting, though. Mm -hmm. So it says uh, she and Teo are arguing. Thought they heard her say the words, figure it out, before she stormed off. Young Ned, old timer who fishes off the pier almost every day and wears a raincoat no matter the weather. If anyone asks why, he says, always be prepared. <laughs> what a character. Love Ned. Uh, told me he saw a girl who might have been Katie hanging around where Darlene's used to be right around closing There's time. There's a lot of Katie and girl who look like Katie. Yeah. So, uh, doesn't ring any bells for me, though. So, where Darlene's used to be? She doesn't know. I've got another one here. Todd Ferguson, a former hedge fund guy who's Ew. been playing Triton's Quest, the test your strength game, twice Triton? a day for the past 11 and a half years. Oh, do you have Triton, Triton wave shell? So confirm amounts, verify pickups from the Screamerama paper, wave 18, wave 26, wave 24, wave 20, Trident 3, shell 6, Trident 10, Trident 13. Names on this are Robert, Isabella, uh, yeah, and there are a bunch of fucking triangle symbols on this. Fascinating. Okay, so uh, he's been playing Triton's Quest, the test your strength game, twice a day for the past 11 and a half years. <laughs> Says it's how he copes with his inner demons, but I don't think it's working. Told me that on the day of the murder, he hit the bell for the 5,000th time. Whoa. That's all he remembers. Aren't you going to say congratulations, he asked? Typical. 
Jimmy Games? Probably says Games, but it's very yeah. funny. Oh, the Jimmy idea games. of Jimmy Games. <laughs> the games. Uh, Jimmy Games, owner of Cool Nanas and the snappiest dresser on the boardwalk, said Katie stopped by to chat and get a snack on the day of the murder. Before she left, she wrote something down on a piece of paper. What? Did you do it? What did you do? How? What was it? How did you do it? I solved the murder. <laughs> <laughs> what did you Wait, do? Wait, tell us. So... The only important numbers oh, in this yeah, game yeah. so yeah, far does. have That's been smart. four and seven, and I yeah. literally went through and I just picked some numbers from the lucky, and it was four, oh, seven, eight. Uh, and this goes and this, oh my god, four, yeah. seven, eight. four, seven, eight, right here. What are those three businesses? What are those three businesses again? One of them is the buffet Taco, right? <laughs> uh, Yellow Seven, uh, Flash of the Past. And eight is Diggity's Dogs. Diggity Dogs. Hang on. I'm going to look at these and see because I think that I, we're going to find out who okay. owns these things again. We're going to open the case though. We're going to open it. Okay. What's in it? What's in it? What's in it? Oh my God. So <gasps> much stuff. <gasps> Woo! Juicy! <laughs> Everybody Maybe gets a piece of paper clues. in there. We talked about everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody gets clues. Short piece of paper. Everybody gets clues. Oh, yeah. Whoa. What the oh. fuck? Oh, what's oh, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Oh, there are. The game. There are, 20, there are yeah. 26 shapes oh. here. This is a fucking game with pegs and oh. letters. I can make an alphabet. Hey. Leave me alone for 10 minutes. I'll be right where Darlene's is. Okay. Where was Darlene's? Wait, did I get you? I think that was the custard guy. So what we have learned over here, okay. we have tiny little triangles. They have a line and a dot somewhere. Okay. What we have found over here is a triangle that has one of the sides with a thicker line. And as you rotate it, it'll actually put one of the letters on top. But as you rotate, if you see my little peg here, so that would be an E because that's the letter that's up. Oh, that's as you so rotate smart. it that way, that would be the letter V. If you rotate it this way, that's the letter N. The Cracker so Barrel game. Kaylee has okay. found out where uh, Darlene's was, mm. which was where again? Daily. So it was this so one So it was right here, here by uh, all this like action. But we also okay. found in here something called Lot 47, Ooh. which is Lover's Lane. Oh! oh. Which might Maybe make a lover's more lane sense. Is what that means. So between two random locations yeah. that have absolutely yeah. nothing to do so with the game. So what this yeah. is also, which I think is kind of intense, is that... This, these are the lease records. <gasps> oh. And some of them have leases on file, oh. and some of them do not. Some of them aren't original leaseholders. Mm. Is there any cross referencing information that goes um, on with this? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, the same lot numbers Incredible. are here. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> hang on. This is, <laughs> hey, actually, this is what I do. Let me look at <laughs> yes, yes. Your One moment while I spread the sheet. the names on it. Do it. V. V is. Okay, middle. And then W. W. Okay. Yeah. While you guys are at that, I'm gonna read you all this like extra little piece of paper that was in the box. Vince. Rocco was going over the accounts for the past few months and he noticed a problem. I told him I'd take a look at the books and get to the bottom of it. See what you think. Not trying to tell you how to run your business. Then it switches into the can and says, but how many chances does he get? I'd teach that kid a lesson if I were you. DJ is Dwayne. Yeah. Because they grew up together. So I bet that was what he went at, went by as a kid, DJ. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I mean, can I read the rest of yeah. uh, Dwayne here? So Dwayne runs the Boardwalk's frozen custard shop, which makes sense. A lot of this went down by the Boardwalk. Uh, Formerly Darlene's. Which has been in his family for years. It used to be one of the most popular stands, but these days it's kind of a sinking ship, much like the rest of the park. Twice divorced, no kids that I know of. No idea where either of the ex-wives went, but I wouldn't stick around either. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. He's good friends with Vince, or as close of a friend as someone like Vince is capable of having. They grew up together, and Dwayne still works for Vince. Since he spends so much of his time with the boss, he has a reputation for being kind of a snitch. Not sure if it's true, but I certainly wouldn't say anything to him I didn't want Vince to hear about. He's got some history with the police, then again, so do a lot of people on the boardwalk. Katie worked for him for a while until she reported him to the health department last summer for having rats in his food storage uh -huh. area. Can't imagine that was good for business. Let's say he wasn't her biggest fan. Wow. I overheard him telling Rocco that he was closing up shop at the time of the murder. He said he left the boardwalk at the same time he does every day, around 6.30. I also read something um, on Rocco's 
a little blurb mm -hmm. that is going to be important because I think I know what Teo's alibi is. Oh. Supposedly, he was behind one of the rides around 5.50 on the day of Katie's murder, having a friendly chat with someone who'd gotten on Vince's bad side. Which we mm. know Rocco had taken yeah. Teo, which was like the, this backs up the alibi yes. that we already yeah. have Right, so this, this is something that I think is corroborated. And and for um, Rocco, Rocco and Teo. Oh, also Rocco. Uh, uh, she heard a rumor that Rocco dated Bethany for a while after she and Teo broke up. Ooh, Rocco Two dated Teo's ex. Uh oh. So okay, so he, so for fifty, Teo collected. Ooh oh. So insurance used to be five hundred dollars for the glowcade. It was five hundred dollars in September, and it was six fifty in Ooh. October. Interesting. And then it was eight hundred in November. Oof. Did he do that for everyone? Did he raise it? Did he raise everyone's insurance fee. Yes. His ex, uh, Teo's ex, Bethany, works at the was also Rocco's ex. <laughs> also Rocco's ex. <laughs> also the everyone's ex. girl who yes. likes knives. Also the one who was in the um, photo, right? Yeah. So then Thank in theory, her motivation is heavy, which is the thing that said he's mine and you know that or whatever. Uh, and her family is the one imposing these things and she was kind of enforcing these things at the end of this. So she's mad at him. She's mad at Teo. She's mad at Rocco. I don't know why she kills Katie of all people unless they were having some kind of fight over Teo, which it seems like by that I guess they were. But she's got both... I don't know if she's going to go to bat for the place she just works at. Mm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. I don't know about that. <laughs> Previously, I thought that this might have been Teo's. I'm almost now positive that this is Katie's. Yeah. Because yeah. confirm amounts, verify pickup. Wave 18, Teo pickup, amount fine. Wave 26, T collected, payment okay. What the fuck is T? Theo? Wait, Theo? Wave 24, D not T, Robert said he's sure. Wave 20, T normal. Trident 13, Dwayne amount okay. Shell 6, correct. Trident 10, D not T again, this can't be right. And then the very last one, what else, because I had you, what did, what's Trident 13? Uh, I'm still finishing that one, but okay. it says, uh, Isabel says definitely T D, but swears her payment wasn't SH. Which is Rainbow World, who was unexcused from V. Short. 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 I think that correlates to this letter. It does. Because D, uh, DJ, Dwayne, Dwayne James, was like, yo, Teo's not getting your shit right. Mm. I'll look over it for you. So I think Teo was supposed to be doing these pickups, and she's confused why Dwayne was instead. And it, and so and he's on here like he regularly yeah. collects for yeah so that's why it says it was short because they owed this much but they only gave me this much so he has been skimming but oh. or someone else put Teo's name next to who mm. did the pickup y'all Dwayne's looking real suspicious <laughs> real here. sketchy now here's the thing though is Dwayne committing multiple crimes because Dwayne's right. already skimming. Though he would have to, like, you would think he would take out Teo, but Katie did discover the information. Yeah, because Teo's not a threat. Teo's the scapegoat. Yeah. Katie's the threat because she has, in this lockbox, yeah. were those pages, this mm -hmm. note, and the key to deciphering her note that she wanted she to get to Teo. And she was running around Correct. asking and checking. Correct. So she wasn't enforcing. No, she was just she was, asking people she about was, their payment. Right. Collected. She's trying to figure out what's going on. She was verifying. Um, well, yeah, let's read the actual fortune. Ooh, ooh. This mystic lady's second sight will dazzle, dumbfound, and delight. Such wondrous things she will foretell, and if you're wise, you'll listen well. For you, dear seeker, the future is filled with amorous possibilities. Madam Oracle has consulted her powers of divination, and she senses that the stars are aligned for romance, either with a longtime beloved or an unexpected new flame. Take the advice of the heavenly realm, cast off your apprehensions, and seize the moment. It will not last for long. K. Looks like she was right. T. Now, that could either be to 
we're in love, or it will not last for long. And this was this okay. was in the bloody popcorn bag. It that was, was with, as was this, as was this, as was this was all okay. This yeah. as was this correct. So like, so what does it all point to? Uh, like, this is still he's mine and you know it. Meet me at the wheel in two hours. We'd still think that this is the ex writing this and handing this to Katie. Katie somehow. Yeah. Also, wasn't this in on her person or was around the area? That was it was where, in the area, which is um, I think maybe that might have been his keychain. Mm. Okay. Oh. Okay. That was Dwayne's keychain, which was yeah. found with the body. Yeah. Yep. Yup. Because who else would have a keychain from Darlene? I mean, that puts him at the time. scene of yeah, the crime. It hasn't been named Darlene's in a really long time. We have motive. What? Uh, yeah. M- means? Yeah. Now, means, means is like, you know, is he big enough to uh, overpower her? But, like, to be stabbed, you don't even have to be that big strong. We don't have any information about the murder weapon yet, unless it's the scissors. We only know that she was stabbed. Right. But the scissors were left in the I bag. Know. They were Correct. not taken with. And you would see blood in powdered Correct. sugar. So, like, where did their paths cross? So if he said he left the boardwalk at 6.30. Yep. And that he was closing up at 6, like everything else closes, there is a 30-minute window. Yeah. I found it. Perfect. She saw Katie leaving Screamorama around 2 p.m. She and Teo were arguing. This is, this is the line. This is the line. The words figure it out. Correct. So, yeah. she doesn't go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She has no time to go here. That is a lie. Now, why would the Sloan twins, local kids who charge tourists to take photos with their boa constrictors, uh, lie? And by saying that they saw specifically, and they're the only people that heard them arguing yeah. at Screamorama, where other people also were, but by saying, oh, no, they were arguing, it makes it seem much more believable that Teo murdered her. Or, mm-hmm. or that the okay. ex-girlfriend had something to do with planting that image in their brain to mm-hmm. sort of keep yeah. that Either way, alive. it makes it seem it makes Teo seem guilty if they were fighting. Correct. Mm-hmm. But no one else Nobody says else. there was any issues nope. between them. Let's read the rest about Teo. So, he's been working hard to turn things around since he got caught up in Vince's stuff. He's been going to counseling, helping out a lot more around the house, and at Screamorama, he's been taking up art again, says it helps him think through things. As much progress as he's made, he still has a quick temper, though he's more prone to get angry at himself than other people. Maybe that was always true. He started dating Katie last summer, and I've never seen him fall so hard. I worried that she thought she was too good for him, but she decided to keep working at the boardwalk after the season ended so that they could spend more time together. They didn't fight much, but in the weeks leading up to Katie's death, I did walk in on them arguing a couple of times. I tried to ask him about it later, but he said he wanted to figure it out on his own. I knew – it is funny to just figure it out specifically, but I know Teo could be insecure about their relationship. He told me once that he was scared she'd see who he really was and ditch him, but if she stuck around for him, she must have liked what she saw. He won't say where he was the night of the murder, but he was at home when I got back from my meeting around 7 p.m. He was really quiet during dinner. He had a bruise that was already starting to show on his cheek. When I asked, he said he must have run into something while he was fixing a ride that day. So obviously yeah. getting his ass getting yeah. yeah. yep. Um Told me he didn't see Katie at all the day she died. And if he had, he didn't remember. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. Danny's so good. So Danny's the only one playing this game. We're all, we're all just doing no. with Danny. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about Bethany. Dated okay. for three years, fighting most of the time. Seemed like a standard teenage drama to me. I remember one of their more heated arguments. We write the tire slash, okay? Ooh. Bethany was furious when Teo started dating Katie. I don't think that she ever really got over him, but it was more than that. Katie seemed to be going places in her life, and Bethany wasn't really. I know that it's uh, I know what it's like to resent someone who seems to have all the options when you feel like you have none. From what Teo's told me, Bethany uh, has a lot of responsibility at home. She's been working two jobs since high school, and she does a lot to look after her younger siblings. Younger siblings! Ah! It can't be easy knowing your whole family's relying on you in that age. Now... Mm. The names don't connect, but it's yeah. a, you know, carnival it's name. It's a um, No, your whole family is relying on you at that age. I invited her to come to one of the owner-operator meetings with the lawyers at Oscar and Grace, but she brushed it off. She said something like, creeps like Vince will never give anybody a fighting chance, so you might as well give up. I didn't bother inviting her to the next meeting. When I asked her what she was up to on the day Katie died, she told me she dipped out of work early around 4.40 to hang with her friends down by the beach for the rest of the night, drinking mostly. What do you feel like you have to rule Bethany out? The... 
we have two sightings around the time, 5 uh -huh. to 5.40 and then 6 o'clock all by the wheel and then the engagement photo and all of that. That's true. That's her in the background. What time was the engagement photo shoot? 6, Six o'clock. The that time me, of the that murder. Might be the alibi for Bethany. I think that's Correct. an alibi. I think, for that's, I think that's it. That's I, it. I just don't have enough for she him. Was waiting, she was waiting by the wheel for Katie and, and she never, never showed, showed her. her. Damn. Did we? I think we just did solved we solve it. Because <laughs> then that would be. So four. Oh, where was she at four o'clock? Where was she at four o'clock? Where was she at four o'clock? Where uh, was Katie at four o'clock? Somewhere around here ish. Oh, Blind Glowarama? He's mine, oh, and you know it. Meet me at the yes. wheel in two hours, and she never, she never showed there. up. She never made it there at six o'clock because that would be where her body was found if Bethany had done it. Uh, read DJ. just his read just his information from the top that is maybe pertinent. Okay, Dwayne James Dolly, born September thirteenth, nineteen seventy five, male five nine, uh, gray hair, brown eyes, no identifying marks. Uh, here's his address, his background check. He was arrested for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest in nineteen ninety three and pleaded no conduct. He went to Brittany Beach High School, and he is the owner and operator of Dolly's, which used to be Darlene's. Um, Dwayne runs the Boardwalk's Frozen Custard Shop, which has been in his family for years. It used to be one of the most popular stands, but these days it's kind of a sinking ship, much like the rest of the park. Twice divorced, no kids that I know of, no idea where either of the ex-wives went, but I wouldn't stick around either. Good friends with Vince, or as close to friends as someone like Vince is capable of having. They grew up together. Dwayne still works for Vince. Since uh, he spends so much time with the boss, he has a reputation for being kind of a snitch. Not sure if it's true, but I certainly wouldn't say anything to him I didn't want Vince to hear about. He's got some history with the police, then again, so do a lot of people on the boardwalk. Katie worked for him for a while until she reported him to the health department last summer for having rats in his food storage area. Uh, can't imagine that was good for business. Let's just say he wasn't her biggest fan. I overheard him telling Rocco that he was closing up at the time of the murder. He said he left the boardwalk the same time he does every day around 6.30. Here's something interesting. His shop is right next to Swag by the Shore. Which is where she works, This right? is where she works. Mm. And there is a 5.45 here for Teo. Uh, and this is for... That's when he got... He said, meet me at 47, which actually, that's not where, that's, that's not, not where that's actually were. it, because we found out that 47 was lot 47, not 47 right. here. And is, Lover's Lane is a, is number thir attraction. below 13. So where he actually mm -hmm. was at that time, where he got his ass kicked, was oh. over here. Yeah. I wonder if he sees her scrambling through the park, he, he knows that, and so... Here's what it is. She was just coming this way. Uh -huh. She was coming this way. He sees Teo leave. Uh -huh. And he knows that Teo, he can see that the ride is closed. Yep. He can see that Teo's not there. And he sees oh. her going back to scream a Rama. So it's the, yeah. So the opportunity is nobody's there nobody's except there. She's for her. going to find Teo. She's going to go Teo's find Teo. And there. he knows that mm -hmm. she's not there. And she can't get that information to Teo because then Vincent would have Dwayne killed. He's the mob boss. He can't find out that he's skimming. I think I think I'm ready to lock yeah, in. I think I yeah. think it is Dwayne. Burn. Do we all agree? <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Okay, tell us if we were right. Oh my god, if we're wrong, I'm doing so many like, multiple crazy. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right first. Okay, I think the letter first. Okay. Or like the postcard. Okay. Hello, investigator. Congrats on putting Dwayne Dolly behind bars. Police <laughs> <laughs> for murdering an innocent girl to cover up his crimes. It can't be easy for Teo knowing Katie died trying to help him. Ooh. But he's free now because of you. Maria sends her thanks. She says Teo's planning a mural to keep Katie's memory alive. He's an artist at Stella Park. Now he can finally get started. Great work, Michelle. <sighs> okay. Tides turn on the boardwalk. A little, a little prologue. Ooh. Brittany Beach, the Essex oh, County District Epilogue. Attorney's Epilogue. Office, has dismissed the charges against Theodore Palace, a Stella Park worker arrested for the November murder of his girlfriend, Catherine Dunn. The Brittany, police, Brittany Beach Police Department announced last week that another Stella Park worker, Dwayne Dolly, was apprehended for the brutal slaying after a search of Dolly's home revealed a knife and articles of clothing containing traces of Dunn's DNA. Dolly's subsequent confession has now paved the way for Palace's release. My client is immensely relieved not only to be exonerated, but to find justice for someone he loves, said Paz's lawyer, Darrell Watson. <laughs> we are doing everything we can to bring Theo home as soon as possible and to put an end to this harrowing ordeal. 
According to Walton, Dolly's arrest was made in response to new information uncovered by a private investigator hired by Palace's mother. This evidence revealed by Dolly's theft from Dunn's uncle, amusement park owner Vincent Stella Jr. Authorities now believe it was Dunn's attempts to expose Dolly's misdeeds that led to her murder. If it weren't for the work of the tireless detectives at Gray Investigations, Walton said, an innocent man would be stuck in jail and Katie's true killer would still be free today. Dunn and Palace aren't the only ones getting justice on the boardwalk this week, however. The Delaware Department of Investigation announced today that it has launched a full inquiry into the management of Stella Park, citing claims of racketeering and other criminal activity Ooh. by Stella and his associates. All right. We did That's a hundred percent clearance rate, ladies and gentlemen. All of it. Yeah. We got our Stella girly. Oh my god. Girly. I think it was the hat. I think, I think it was that. So join the Discord. It's free to do. Uh, subscribing to the channel doesn't do a lot for you, but does great things for us. <laughs> we have a Patreon. You can check it out. Uh, we did put a little behind the scenes clip of setting up for this today. The things that we do for these kind of streams. Check it out at patreon.com slash pixel circus. That's all for tonight, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>